Welcome to Digital Asset News, take the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down into bite-sized pieces. Today we've got some pretty interesting stories about price action, mining, and what I would consider just a laughable type of event. So first up, US government uh, blacklists Bitcoin addresses tied to a 100 million cryptocurrency laundering scheme and Bitcoin miners set a record hash rate despite the price recently experiencing a large massive weekly drop in over two months and why this is our prize article about what's going to happen in the next two months as the Bitcoin halving comes down and how this all relates to the Bitcoin price. And finally, we're going to talk about mass adoption, which is a story about how there are now over 7,000 cryptocurrency ATMs worldwide and why this is big news for Bitcoin and the entire cryptocurrency market and finally at the very last piece we're gonna go over the scam of the day which we'll do at the very end of these stories so let's get into it so first up this one to me is laughable uh, US government blacklists Bitcoin addresses tied to a hundred million cryptocurrency laundering scheme and if you're new to this channel you know that we do this scam of the day uh, every single video uh, but for these types of um, scammers who have already gotten away with it I mean they're gone and with, with this article we're gonna dig into it's gonna show you just how easy it is that once these scammers get your money that's it, it doesn't matter what's going on or how powerful a government is they are out of there so let's get into it so the US Treasury Department is blacklisting ooh, 20 Bitcoin addresses associated with a pair of Chinese nationals accused of laundering millions of dollars worth of stolen cryptocurrency. The hacks are tied to Lazarus, a group of cyber thieves allegedly linked to North Korea and known for stealing digital assets from cryptocurrency exchanges. And just goes on blah, blah, blah about how awful this is and, and how they're going to, you know, hammer down on it. Uh, investigators say the crypto laundering is part of a larger effort by North Korea to fund its weapons programs by illicit means. And then some information about the UN National Council, which really nobody cares. So the last sentence is where I thought it was just laughable because it says here, uh, OFAC listed eight Bitcoin addresses tied to Tian Yin Yin and 12 tied to Lai Jai Dong. Millions of dollars in Bitcoin have moved through the addresses in the past, although most of the addresses have been drained of all funds at time of publishing. So what are you going to do? See, a blacklisted some Chinese nationalists are, that, that are, have ties to North Korea and uh, they got away with, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars or hundred million dollars. Uh, so what are you going to do? What is the big thing? It's not like... Um, these agencies are going to go to China or North Korea and like, hey, give us those people. <laughs> They're not going to do anything. All that money is gone. So when we start to talk about scam of the day, it's important that we deal with these things now uh, because these type of nonsense can happen. And once that uh, cryptocurrency is gone, it's gone, baby. It's not coming back. So I took a look real quick at the uh, U.S. Department of the Treasury. And here they have it listed, you know, Lai Jing Dong. Um, Anshan Lin Yang, Tian Yin Yin, and it just gives their cryptocurrency addresses, but who cares? <laughs> it's gone. And uh, that's it. This is why I consider it laughable. And if we don't deal with this now, with these types of scammers, it's, it's all out of here and it's going to be out of control. Next up. Bitcoin miners set record hash rate despite price recently experiencing largest weekly drop in over two months. So over the past seven days, we've all felt this. The Bitcoin price dropped by 12%. And this was the largest weekly plunge since November 2019. So hey, you know, we're, uh, we're making strides, we're making gains. Unfortunately, it's in the wrong direction. Uh, this plummet went from 86.15 to as low as 71.57. This was in the November 2019 drop, which was 17% within a week. If this would happen in the stock market, people would lose their minds because they don't have ice in their veins like we do. If you're in this market for any amount of time, cryptocurrency, digital assets, you know you're like, eh, 10%, 5%, whatever in a day or a week, we don't care because we're, we're used to it. It's just how it is. So for all the people that come over here that are, are from stocks, mutual funds, uh, get ready because you're about to get shook. And that's just how it is. You have to understand the market that you're in. You have to understand that it's high volatility, but with great risk comes great rewards. Moving on. 
Last week, Bitcoin dropped alongside stocks as fears of a coronavirus pandemic increased. Predictably, this led to many questioning Bitcoin status as a safe haven asset. And even I did, uh, did a video about a week ago about the same thing. Uh, we have always talked about Bitcoin being a safe haven or a store of value, which are really two different things. And uh, during this time, Peter Schiff had a field day because what happened with gold was that it went up during this time as Bitcoin and everything dropped. I mean, he was just essentially dancing on the graves. He's like, I told you Bitcoin or I told you gold is the best and Bitcoin's nothing and blah, blah, blah. Well, that's Peter Schiff. He is just a fantastic marketer, just like Justin Sun. I know some people like him, but I like both those guys. They seem to be great marketers. But um Unfortunately for Schiff and everybody else in the gold market, I mean, yeah, gold did go up, uh, but it went right back down to its original levels as before about a month ago. So nothing really to really to write home about. It just went up, uh, but it went right back down. So who cares? Same thing with uh, Bitcoin. Um, you know, big, uh, gold here is going up. Bitcoin went up and uh, the stock market actually went up today. So just uh, one of those things. But moving on. But... Bitcoin miners were not spooked by the drop in price. And I'll give it to them. As far as like ice in the veins, those Bitcoin miners that are out there, you guys do not care. You're like, look, this halving's coming up. We got to, you know, turn and burn these machines and hit this hash rate as high as we can go because in around May 2020, all these efforts are going to be dropped in half. So Bitcoin mining power hit 136.3 quintillion hashes per second. And here's the actual number of whatever a quintillion is. I can't even fathom that number. It's just beyond me. So I need pictures. Uh, here's the uh, the hash power from blockchain. This is hash rate or terahashes per second. You're looking at, this was a 30-day. <laughs> so this 30-day. Um, so yeah, so here's a 30-day. And it doesn't look too, too impressive right now. You're like, ah, oh, it goes up, goes down. Here's the big spike they were talking about. Uh, terahashes, 136. Sure. Let's take a look at 60 days. Yeah, okay, still going up and down like a big sawtooth pattern. And remember, so hash rate is just the computing power of the Bitcoin mining network. So uh, the higher it is, the more computing power is being used, electricity is being used, all that stuff to pump out and solve these uh, or actually secure the network and to uh, get Bitcoin rewards. So that's uh, 60 days. Let's look at 180 days. Now we're seeing something. Uh, looks like there was some drops here around September, but just continually goes up. But when we start to look at the one year hash rate, now we're looking at some power. This is just in one year. Imagine going from 40 million uh, to you're essentially tripling to over 130 million. That's amazing in one year. Let's take a look at two years. Now it becomes more clear. Look at this computing power. This is in 2018. It went from 20, 140. If we take a look at all time, it's just crazy. It's just insane. Right here, there's, I mean, essentially there's a blip, there's nothing. And then all of a sudden we are all the way up here. So if you don't think that there's something major happening right now, as far as Bitcoin mining, getting everything in before this halving, the halving prices to increase afterwards, I see it. I see something big is going to happen. And uh, we're going to take a look at why I why it's going to go up. Moving on. This shows that despite the lackluster prices, miners are still incentivized to keep the Bitcoin network secure. Eh, sure, I guess. But I think it's more about this. This also comes as the halving of the miners' rewards draws closer. Notably, the stock to flow creator known as Plan B suggests that Bitcoin price is still in course to witness a phenomenal breakout after the halving. So you have to understand, these miners, after uh, May 2020, so right now they're getting 12 and a half Bitcoin per block. But after May, it's 6.25. So same amount of work from one day to the next, same amount of work, same amount of power, same amount of electricity, same amount of money that you have to put out as a miner to, to mine these Bitcoin, but you get half the reward. Not a, not a great deal if you're a miner, but I think the big miners are going to do okay. And uh, so looking at this Plan B, or Plan B, he is a Twitter user. And I... Honestly, I never heard of him. Apparently, he's a big guy on Twitter. I'm not a big Twitter person. I have a weak Twitter game. You can see because I only have like a couple hundred <laughs> followers on Twitter. But Plan B recently noted 
that the price of Bitcoin stayed above $8,200 in February, just like he had predicted. He further stated that the same indicator that he had used for last month's prediction now shows that Bitcoin will stay above $8,600 in March. So let's all burn that into our memories, $8,600 for March. If it falls below, then uh, maybe this price prediction that he's going to make, which we're going to go over in a little bit, is uh, fooey. There's nothing there to be seen. But here was the actual post from Plan B. And he talks about, hey, look, last month's forecast, it uh, will stay above 8,200. Well, it did. Indicator just flipped 8,600, March close. Risky with Bitcoin now at 84.75. But I like to share it out as a sample test. This is totally different from stock to flow. So here's what he's saying. 2020, Bitcoin stays above 8,200. And he says if it does that, they're not going to drop to 6,000 or 4,000 that others are predicting, which I don't see that ever happening again, but who knows. May 2020 having. Uh, it'll be above 10,000. So in May, we're going to see a Bitcoin above 10K like we just saw like, you know, three, four weeks ago. And this is the interesting part. 2021 bull run starts after the halving and tops 100,000 before December 2021. And this is the same type of price prediction I've heard over and over and over again. And this is always the conservative one. Uh, Tim Draper predicts it to be around 250,000. So for me, I think it could be anywhere between 100 and 250,000 a year after. Well, I think it's always a year after the Bitcoin halving, but it could be at the end of 2020. So uh, we will see. And I just did a really simple uh, type of assumption as far as like what it's going to be. So I just took a look at different uh, pricings for the first, the second halving. And I said, look, the price at the halving. For the first one, it was $12.31. That was in November 28th, 2012. And then uh, roughly a year later, it went to about a thousand bucks. And that was an increase of around 8,000%. Now for the second halving, which the price of the halving, which was on July 9th, 2016, that was the date of the second halving, it was 650 bucks. Pretty good. Um, but then in a year and a half later, on December 16th, 2017, but I'm telling almost twenty thousand dollars, which is still great, but it's not a as as a great of an increase as the percentage wise goes. So if we go from eight thousand to roughly three thousand, three thousand is about a third of eight thousand, right? I mean roughly. So if we also take that that same number and say, well, the third having eh, it's about going to be what it is. Let's drop it by two thirds. So a third of a three thousand is one thousand percent. If just like Plan B, it's he says that it's going to be around ten thousand dollars for the having, which is going to be around May twenty twenty. So maybe in like a year after that, maybe six months, maybe two years. I don't know. Uh, it could be around a hundred thousand. The question is, can you wait around that long? Can you wait around a year and a half to go ten x on your investment? That's the real question. Uh, I believe that's what it's going to be. I don't not I. I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna BS and say I think it's gonna go to zero like people do is like a, like a disclaimer. It's not going to zero. Bitcoin's gonna be here for a long time, and uh, I think with the Bitcoin having the institutions that are coming in, I mean big institutions that are already here like Fidelity, TD Ameritrade, Van Eck has already put out their PDF to their uh, analysts that say, hey, look, this is a great way to to um, offset the volatility of the market. Yeah, I think it's going to go conservatively to 100,000, but what do I know? Moving on. Article talks about Bitcoin having, you know, we just talked about that. It goes from 12.5 to 6.25 in May. Um, but this, these last two sentences were interesting to me. It states, one Bitcoin miner even suggests that Bitcoin needs to soar above 15,000 for mining to remain profitable. That's interesting. So... After this halving comes about, let's say in June, and Bitcoin isn't profitable for miners, some are just going to turn their rigs off because what's the point of doing it uh, if you can't get paid? And those are the small ones. The large types of Bitcoin miners, uh, the ones in China, and this new gigafactory that's going to open up in uh, right around Medellin, Texas, uh, they're probably going to stay on because they know that Bitcoin price will always not always, will eventually go up. And they're thinking just like me, conservatively 100,000, maybe max out at 250, maybe 500,000, we don't know. But 
these big factors are the ones that are going to win out because they're going to have the ability to have reserves stored as far as funds to keep their rigs on to mine the Bitcoin to keep the network safe and also to profit later on down the road. So we will see. And then last sentence, it says, nonetheless, plan B is assured is 69 or 70,000 followers that Bitcoin will pump hard after the halving. And uh, I have to agree with him. So we will see what happens. Conservatively, 100,000, maybe 250. Who knows where we are? Let's move on. Last up in stories of mass adoption, these are my favorite stories. Uh, there are now over 7,000 cryptocurrency ATMs worldwide. Well, fantastic. Let's get into it. So the world now sees, I mean, we know that there's 7,000 uh, cryptocurrency ATMs. Great. The article really can, can boil down to these two sentences, essentially. The world now sees 11.7 new crypto ATMs installed per day, according to Coin ATM Radar's data from the past seven days. So imagine that, 12 new ATMs every single day, seven days a week, 12 months out of year, 365 days. That's a lot. Crypto ATMs only recently surpassed the 6,000 landmark in November 2019, showing a growing public demand for cryptocurrency availability. This type of data shows digital asset adoption and presence continues waging forward one step at a time. So before I go on, I forgot to ask you, um, what is your opinion as far as where Bitcoin is going to go over the next year, two years? Or what do you think it's what do you think is going to be at the having and after? I just want to, I'm just curious to get a gauge of where everybody's at. Put that in the comments below. And then for this one, as far as crypto ATMs, um, when I read this, I'm like, that's at first I was like, that's great. 7,000 uh, ATMs, fantastic. But as I was reading, I'm like, hold on, why, why an ATM? I mean, if you're in the US, if you're in Europe, if you're in Australia, um, China, China, wherever you're at, the question to me is why not just use an exchange, right? Exchanges are easy to use. I mean, we have our phones, we just download an app, connect our banks, da da da. And then some exchanges, they, you can even use credit cards. So, um, what's the point of an ATM? And I started to think about it. And I'm like, well, maybe it's the fees. Maybe the fees are low. So, I took a look at what the fees themselves are. So, Bitcoin ATMs charge an average transaction fee of 8.93%. Coin ATM radar said. I think that's this is the uh, website which you can see where all the different uh, ATMs are. And there's Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ether Dash, Litecoin, all these types of coins that you can use for, I mean, in, in different locations. So 8.9%, that's kind of a high thing. So I'm like, well, I guess I don't think it's that. Um, I was like, well, maybe about privacy because, you know, with our exchanges, if you have to level up, you know, if you're level one type of uh, um, putting your information as far as an exchange, like when I went through Binance, uh, when it was open to me, because I live in Texas, um, it was pretty simple, you know, not too much information was, was needed as far as KYC, but then if you wanted to do higher transactions and withdraw higher amounts, you had to put a lot of information in. So there was the KYC or AML, anti-money laundering type of uh, provisions in place. So maybe the same thing with uh, ATMs, but it's the same thing. I mean, you have to, you know, on some, you have to put your finger in there. You have to, <laughs> you have to scan your finger, your, your, your thumbprint. You have to put your driver's license or your uh, cell phone number. Now, not all are the same. Everyone's are different. But if you want to um, buy more and more, uh, on a daily limit, you have to have, there's greater limits as far as your KYC. The next thing I thought about was, you know, ease of use, but I thought, you know, I don't need to go down to the store to deposit money to get my Bitcoin or whatever else. I can just do it on, on the exchange. So again, I don't get it. Uh, there was one thing that I thought about, which was <clears throat> if you're new to cryptocurrency digital assets, uh, you don't remember, but certain banks if you would deposit money into exchanges, certain banks would just delete your account. They would say, sorry, you can't bank here. And your account was gone. I mean, you get your money out and everything, but you couldn't bank there anymore. So if you, I mean, if it comes down to that later on, I mean, ATMs are an, are an ideal way. So I don't, uh, I'm not really well versed with the ATMs, but if you know of a, a good reason why we should use the ATMs, then put in the comments below. I'd love to read that because uh, I'm I could be uninformed. And then, but there was one thing I thought about, and I want to see what uh, uh, 
how this all works, but what about the unbanked as far as people who live in certain areas that are, you know, uh, parts of Africa, uh, parts of Europe, parts of um, uh, Mexico? What about the people that are unbanked that make less than $5 a day? Because those people, it's hard for them to get banked. First of all, not many banks around. And second of all, they don't have the funds to open up a bank account because they make so little money. So I thought, well, maybe that's a good thing. You could have an ATM, you could deposit your funds, whatever it is that you make, and then you, you could be stored on a paper wallet. And I know that, that banks aren't readily available and people don't make a lot of money, but around the globe, there are a lot of people who have access to cell phones that do not have access, and not just cell phones, smartphones, that do not have access to banks themselves, which I find kind of odd if you're making less than five dollars a day. However, you know, however you can get a hold of a cell phone refurbished and in different countries that they make these different smartphones that are like super duper cheap, so I'm not for sure. But I took a look at, I took this map, let's see, the actual map here as far as how many different uh, ATMs there are. And you can see like in America there's a boatload for whatever reason. And then, you know, Colombia, well, Mexico 5, Colombia, and then parts of South America, good amounts. And Africa, not as many. Mostly they're up here in Spain and Italy, 79. And then you have Norway, Sweden. Uh, the UK has got a ton of them. So places where there are already banks. But in places like Africa, uh, India, not really. Uh, Vietnam. So what, anyhow, what I did was I took this map and I overlaid it. I overlaid it onto what would be considered the unbanked. So real quick, here's where you have all the people who are unbanked statistically. So the darker the color, the less people that you have that are um, that have an account at a formal financial institution. So you can see uh, Africa, you know, heavily, heavily uh, unbanked. Uh, parts of South America, India, parts of Europe, uh, China over here, Australia looks pretty solid, and then Vietnam, those types of areas. So if we take a look real quick. If we, let's just take a look at parts of Mexico. So pretty unbanked. And then as far as like a ATM, cryptocurrency, it says five. So that's not great. But moving down around Colombia, where it says 94, there's a lot of, I mean, that's a pretty heavily unbanked area, correct? And then moving down Brazil, Uruguay, Paraguay, 7, 3, 11. So yeah, I can see that. Africa, going over there, not so many, but there's still a lot of these different ATMs in the unbanked area. Uh, going into Saudi Arabia, where there's 10, uh, 79, that's more like Spain, uh, 20, Vietnam, 12, 7. And then parts of uh, Pakistan, uh, Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan. So yeah, so I feel like this might be a good thing for the unbanked as far as cryptocurrency and digital assets. Not for sure how that would work, but I thought, yeah, I mean, it could be like a correlation. But I will say this, uh, as far as ATMs, I mean, people use them. I've, I've seen them around. I know people do use them. The first one, well, I think was uh, out in 2012, 2013. And the first day, like uh, people put in $10,000. So and that was the very first one. So we'll see what this all means later on. Uh, let me know what you think about unbanked ATMs. That's just a pie in the sky or, or what's going cool. What do you think about that? And that essentially will do it for today's video. I want to say thanks for sticking with me through the rants. If you've got time, I'm going to, we're going to go over the uh, scam of the day. It should take about two minutes or so, and that would really help us out. So real quick, scam of the day. If you are new to this uh, community or new to this uh, cryptocurrency digital asset space, just know that everybody's trying to get your money. And what you need to understand is that you need to treat everything as a scam until proven otherwise. If you think that Ripple is giving away free XRP, send an email to Ripple, the official website, and just ask them. They're going to tell you no. If you think Binance is, is doing airdrops for free money, just send them an email. Official website, they're going to tell you no. Uh, Coinbase, Kraken, OKDEX, whatever exchange you want to go to, any type of project, just go to their official uh, website, send them an email, and just wait 24 hours. That's usually how long it takes to get back to you, and they're all going to tell you no, and you're not going to lose your money. So second of all, that helps you, but for people who are not as well informed as you are, we need to help them out so they don't run into these traps like the people that screwed over $100 million from Bitcoin uh, thievery. That was a different thing, but 
we need to wipe out these scams. So in every one of my videos in the description, there is a section that is titled scam of the day and there's a link next to it and it's going to take you to this handy dandy Google spreadsheet. And we have done fantastic work, everybody. I don't thank you guys enough. Thank you so much for helping me out because we have removed a ton of these scams since January 15th. Look at all those scams. Gone, baby. Gone. So that's good news. Now we just got these one, two, three, four, five, six. Now these last three here are all from the same account. Uh, so if you can, we can get rid of one, uh, YouTube will, will usually uh, ban their entire um, YouTube channel. So, so really it's four. So let's take a look at the, the first one here. See what we got. So it's always the same trash. Um, 10,000 Bitcoin and 100,000 Ethereum giveaway through Binance. So we already know they're not going to give it, right? So this is what I call an asymmetrical giveaway. Okay, this does not exist. So how do you know it's a scam? Well, that. You can also look at the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the comments and they're pretty funny uh, they say scam some may not some some will but if you've seen this type of scam if you're still like on the fence like is this real then just send Binance an email and say hey are you guys give away 10,000 Bitcoin they're gonna tell you no and they're gonna come back here if you could and we're gonna downvote this and we're looking for the report which scammers always uh, hide it it's always on three dots click on report we're gonna say spam misleading, choose a type, and that is scams and fraud. Uh, doesn't apply to links, or maybe it does, I don't know. But it's in the video there, so there's links within the description, I guess. Click next, and we're gonna say, hey, this is a scam. And we're gonna click report, and we're done. So, takes about a minute to do three or four, doesn't take too long. I think the longest thing it takes is to load the, load the YouTube video itself. And that's it. So if you could help me out, I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for sticking with me to the very end. Listen through all these rants and rumblings. I really do appreciate everybody. Uh, if you like these types of videos, there's going to be two more that are going to pop up to the left and right. I don't know what they are because they're curated uh, for your viewing pleasure by YouTube. And that's it. Uh, so thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.